stuff going on in our world and how do we navigate we need some wisdom we need some wisdom and how to get through life and how to navigate some of the problems and obstacles that we have and i introduced this series when the bible said that solomon uh, was asked of god god asked him i'll give you anything that you want and a lot of us, we said, man, I want to win the lottery, man. I, I, want, I want to kill my enemy. But he didn't do any of that. He just asked the Lord for wisdom. And the Bible said, because God, God told him, because you didn't ask for wealth, you didn't ask revenge on your enemies, you didn't ask for any of those things, I'm going to give you wisdom, and you're going to be the richest and widest man that ever lived. And so the Bible said, God, at that moment, gave Solomon the wisdom that he needed in order to judge the people or to be able to rule over the people that God had made him a steward over. I pray today that we'll ask for God's wisdom. How many want the wisdom of God? We got a lot of decisions every day that we have to make. I'm going to read you a verse of scripture, then we're going to pray and ask the Lord to help us here out of Proverbs, excuse me, chapter 18, verse 20. And it says this, wise words satisfy like a good meal. How many have ever had a good meal, man? Just a good meal. It says wise words satisfy like that. The right words bring satisfaction. They really do. They satisfy you. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. So let's pray as we dive into this message today. Father, we thank you for the word of God. I thank you for the people of God that are here. I want to just especially thank you, Lord, for those that almost didn't make it tonight. I pray, God, that you'll minister to them as well. And those that are watching online, I pray today, God, that we'll be open to the Holy Spirit, that you'll remove every distraction, so many things that are pressing on us from different places, God, that you'd open our hearts to your word and give us wisdom. Help us to hear wisdom from the word of God. And Lord, let me be just a mouthpiece to speak the word, Lord, and let the people hear the voice behind the voice. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Amen. So this evening, I'm going to talk about wisdom with your mouth. Wisdom with your mouth. You got to watch what you say, am I right? And so I'm going to challenge you to have wisdom with your mouth because all of us, this message can apply to everyone. I would say does apply to every single person in this building. How many have ever said something and you just said, man, I regret what I said it? I mean, we put our foot in our mouths, right? And you probably heard this kind of a a rhyme. It says, sticks and stones may break my bones. But words will never hurt me. That's a fat lie. How many know that's true? I mean, we, we've he- we hear it. You probably said it to your kids. But we understand that words do hurt. Somebody amended that phrase. And they said, this, they said it should be read this way. Sticks and stones may break my bones. But they soon can be mended. But those names and words hurt my soul. And the damage never ended. So when we're talking about wise words and we're talking about words that we speak and things that we say, the book of Proverbs is actually loaded with so many things about the word that we speak. And it mentions over 150 times the tongue, the mouth, your lips, your words. And one reason is because it's critical what we say because they say that the average person or the average man speaks 16,000 words a day. On the other hand, the average woman, I won't even talk about, I don't even want to say that, but they, they, they say that women do talk a little bit more. I just say listen a little bit more, not, not, not quite the same, but they say that we can speak about 70 pages or the words that we speak are equivalent to 70, a 70-page 70 book a day. 
So we don't realize that the word that we speak or we underestimate the impact of the word that we speak because we talk so much, we don't realize that what we say matters. What you say does matter. The word that you speak do matter. And here's the thing, our word that we speak could either be good or bad. And we communicate so much every day, and not just verbally, we communicate with email, we communicate with text, uh, we communicate through uh, Facebook and social media, uh, TikTok, we do all these different ways of communicating. I mean, we communicate so quickly that sometimes we're not even thinking what we're saying. We're just, we're just shooting it off oh, right, real quick. Uh, this comes to your mind and you just shoot. And, and if, you, if you've been like me and you just admitted it, sometimes we shoot it off so quick we wish we could bring it back. Man, if I can bring it back from cyberspace somehow and bring it back. Man, but it's out there now. Everything that I said, I put it out there. And here's the thing I want you to listen to today. I want you to really just hear what I got to say. And listen carefully to what I have to say right now. God is interested in, he's concerned about listening to, recording, and holding you accountable for every word that you speak. Jesus said every idle word, we're going to give an account before God. Can I preach tonight? It is Wednesday night, right? Prime time. I'm a priest tonight. I want to challenge you here a little bit because I believe, again, we don't often think of how powerful the word that we say. Proverbs 23 says this, verse 15, it says, My son, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice indeed. I myself, yes, my inmost being will rejoice when your lips, what, speak right things. In other words, when your heart is wise, other people are going to rejoice because you're saying things that are good and wisdom is saying the right things. But again, here, I want to read the scripture again in another version, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. So life is the gift of God, but death is the result of our sin. And there are life-giving words and life-taking words. Our words are either giving life or taking life. And so we got to decide. We got to think about what we're saying. We don't realize that the word that we speak are not neutral. There's no such thing as a neutral word. Every word that you say has an effect. Everything that you say, there is a consequence. In fact, Jesus said that in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, on the day of judgment, it says, every one of us will give an account for every word that we speak. Just think about how many marriages have been destroyed because day after day, words have been spoken and demeaning to one another. How many children have been impacted because they've been told that they're no good, that, you know, they, 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 they've been told horrible words like, I wish you were never born. All of these things that have been said to children have literally destroyed them. There was a suicide note that was left behind by a woman, and she just left two words on that suicide, suicide note, and the words were, they said. They said. She was so, so filled with anxiety and depression because of what they said. See, everything that we say affects other people. This is why the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. I'm very careful. I try to be very careful about what I say. I try to be very careful about what I say over this pulpit. I try to be very careful about the word that I speak because I know that the words that I speak have weight. What I say to people have weight. I was thinking about this, and I'm not going to do this, but think about this. If I decided in the next 60 seconds to say some of the most evil, sinful things and horrible things to you, that would affect the whole congregation. You probably wouldn't come back again. I wouldn't blame you. 
in 60 seconds, I could literally poison all of you. Literally, I could do that. I'm not going to do that. Don't worry, okay? I'm okay. <laughs> if I do, somebody get me off the pulpit. Something happened. I'm, I'm having a stroke. or something not right. Amen. <laughs> Slap me, man, or something. Get, get, it, get it out of me, whatever you got to do. But what I'm saying is, in the same way, in the next 60 seconds, I can give you words that can encourage you, that can speak life into you, that can give you hope. And I'm just here to tell you that, man, I'm glad you're here, and Jesus is glad you're here in the house today, right? But listen to this. Nothing is open more wrongly at the right, wrong time than our mouth. Am I right? So I'll read you this funny story. You might have heard it. I think I've said it before. But there was a, a stock boy at the grocery store, and he was stocking the vegetables. And, and a lady came up to him and said, can I buy a half head of lettuce? And he was kind of bewildered, so he walked back to the manager and had the lettuce in his hand. But he didn't realize that the woman was walking behind him. So he went to his manager and said, you're not going to believe this, but there's an old bag out there who wants to buy a half a head of lettuce. He turned around and he saw her standing there and he goes, and this fine lady right here would like to buy the other half. <laughs> That's quick thinking, right? That's fast thinking right there. See, we open our mouth, we don't have any idea what's coming out of there sometime. And so what I really want to touch on today is out of the book of James. I've been talking about the book of Proverbs, but they say that the book of James is the New Testament Proverbs. In fact, if you look at the book of James, it's broken down in these chapters, almost like Proverbs is, it, talk, it talks about anger, it talks about boasting about the future, it talks about prayer, it talks about grace, humility, it talks about uh, riches that are temporary, about your speech and wisdom. So they say the book of James is actually the book of wisdom in the New Testament. And so I want to I turn to the book of James because I believe the book of James talks more about the tongue and the mouth than any other New Testament book. And so let's read James chapter 3, verse number 2. Look at what it says. It says, we all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is the perfect man. He's able to keep his whole body in check. Now James is saying, if you can control your mouth, that means you're perfect. Now that word perfection isn't the word perfection that we're thinking without a flaw. The word perfection there in the Greek literally means mature and healthy. It says basically when you've learned to have maturity and you have good health, then you've learned how to control your tongue. Isn't it something that when you go to the doctor, one of the first things that they do to examine you is they want to stick out your tongue. Let me see what's in your tongue. Apparently, I, I, I looked this up. I said, why does the doctor want to look at your tongue? Well, apparently the color of your tongue, the pores and the texture of your tongue can really tell us what kind of disease you have. They can tell whether you're diabetic, whether you have hydration, even neurology things, issues that are going on in your life. I mean, the tongue can tell us about your health, what's going on inside. I believe the word that you speak can tell us what's going on inside your spirit. They can tell us what's really going on in your life. So a lot of us say, why do I have to watch what I say? It's just words. Are you kidding me? Words are heavy, man. They're significant. So let me, let me emphasize what James says, because James breaks it down as to the power of the tongue. He breaks down the direction of the tongue. So write this down if you're taking notes. Hopefully you, you're taking some notes. Your tongue, or let's write it this way. My tongue directs where I go. I can tell the direction of your life by the words that you speak. Your tongue is the compass of your life. Because your tongue has tremendous influence. Uh, your conversations, what you talk about, what you say, really designates the direction of your life. We shape our words, but then our words shape us. 
Look at what it says here in verse 3 in the book of James. Uh, chapter 3 says, when we put bit in the mouth of a horse, we can turn the whole animal. The tongue is small, it's tiny, right? But because it's able to, this, if you're able to bridle or a bit in a horse's mouth, it says consider a bit in the horse's mouth. Have you ever seen that these two or 3,000 pound stallions can be maneuvered by a 95 pound jockey? I mean, this thing, all because they have a bit, they place it on the tongue, strategically on the tongue of that horse, and he's able to control the direction. This little piece of metal that's in there, this bit, can control the direction of this horse. And he even talks about, consider the large ship. He goes, the large ship, he said, verse 4, or take a ship as an example, Although they're so large and are driven by strong wind, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Think about how big these ocean liners are, how big these ships are. They're huge. I mean, they're big. And yet, when you look at how large, they said the anchor itself it's like the, the weight of 10 cars, and, and it's so massive. But really, the rudder, in comparison to how large the ship is and how large the anchor is, it's very small in comparison, and yet it directs this whole ship. Your tongue, think about how big it is in compared to your head and every part of your body. That little tongue can control the direction of your life. That little tongue says a lot. That little red little thing right there, amen, can tell us a lot. The tongue is the steering wheel of your life. Can I say it this way? Your tongue is your GPS. I can know the direction of your life by what you say and the words that come out of it. Change your world by changing your words. Because really, what we say really says a lot about us and tells us what's in control of your life. Number two, you ready for this? My tongue can destroy what I have. Some of the greatest destruction in family, some of the greatest destruction in relationship, some of the greatest destruction that takes place in people's lives is a result of that little tongue. They open their mouth, the thing that they say. And that has destroyed a lot of what we have. And James in verse 5 talks about that uh, consider, it says in verse 5, consider what a great forest is. It's set on fire by a small little spark. All it takes is a little spark to cause the forest fire. I was reading the article today about a little boy who was playing with matches and he caused the fire of what we know as the buckweed fire. And this was years ago. He destroyed, he was playing with matches outside. And he destroyed 38,000 acres, destroyed 21 homes, caused an evacuation of 15,000 people. 23 blazes started as a result that swept through California all because the little boy decided to strike a match and play with matches. Don't play with matches. <laughs> Take those matches away from your kids. Did I tell you about the time I lit a smoke bomb in my house? Did I ever tell you guys? Yeah, I did tell you about that. I told you that story. Remember that? Anyway, I lit a smoke bomb in my house. My family was wondering, what was the, they, they all came out. I, I lit a smoke bomb because, I don't know, I'm a kid. I have no idea why I did it. I lit it, and then I left. <laughs> Couple hours, I came back. My family's all outside. My brothers are outside, and they have this, like, this panic look in them. And, 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 and I said, what's going on? They go, there's smoke in the house, but we can't, we, there's no fire. We don't know what's going on. I go, oh, I lit a smoke bomb in the house. <laughs> I got in trouble, man. Whew, my backside hurt for a while. Don't ever do that. Don't do this at home. So James talks about uh, it can destroy everything. Uh, uh, just like a careless match can destroy a, a, a forest, uh, your tongue can destroy relationship. 
Think about a gossiping tongue. Set on fire, man. How quickly it can cause a lot of havoc. Man, it can destroy relationships or reputation. It can destroy marriages. It can destroy, man, all you need is some gossip going on in the church. It can, it can disrupt the church because people are gossiping, talking, saying things they shouldn't be saying. They can destroy, it, 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 what do I call them? Verbal arsonists. You're a verbal arsonist. Man, it's like your tongue's on fire, man. It's, and it's not, it's not Holy Ghost tongue to fire. It's, it's fire from hell. Let me just tell you. And James is saying that, that the fire that we have can burn people by what we say. And the words can really destroy lives. Just like a forest fire, it can destroy and it can raise havoc uh, Proverbs 18.20 says this. It says, you have to live with the consequences of everything that you say. Verse number six of James, it says, it sets the whole course of his life on fire and is itself set on fire where? From hell. So if you're wondering where that's coming from, that's coming from hell. It's inspired by hell. All the words that we say, all the words that are uh, inflammatory, words that are degrading, words that are put down, it really, it's really, it's set on fire from hell. Can you imagine, you know, when a guy gets home, uh, he's cranky, he's mad, he's grumpy. Uh, the husband, you know, he comes home uh, and he's upset. He yells at the wife uh, and the wife uh, yells at the kids and the kids, they yell at the babysitter and the babysitter yells and kicks the dog. The dog bites the cat. The cat comes home and scratches the baby. The baby uh, tears off the Barbie doll. All this happens. Why? Because it's set on fire from hell. Things begin, it, it raises havoc. There was a couple who came in for marriage counseling. He said, uh, I said, uh, he said, I said this, and then she said that. And the pastor said, then what happened? He goes, all hell broke loose. Amen. <laughs> Guys, you know what I'm talking about. Proverbs 21, 23, it said, if you want to stay out of trouble, be careful what you say. Are you careful about what you're saying? We have to be very careful about the word that we speak. Now, look at what it says here in verse 7 and, not, uh, verse seven and 8. It says, all kinds of animals have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. Basically, you have no human power unless God, you can't tame. It is restless, it's evil, and full of deadly poison. It says, man can tame all kinds of animals. You can tame lions, you can tame, uh, you know, uh, elephants, you can tame all these animals. But man, that tongue, that's wild. You can't tame that tongue. It's like, it's poisonous. Are you with me? They used to have a place, I don't even know if it's open anymore. I don't think it is anymore, but it was years ago when I was a kid. They had a place called Lion Country Safari. Is that open anymore? That's, that's not open anymore. That was years ago. But Lion Country Safari, you could drive your car, and there was wild animals. But one of the things that it gave you was a warning sign that said, do not get out of your car. Do not roll down your window. And sometimes those animals seem really friendly, like, oh, there's a little lion right there. He's coming. <laughs> Don't roll down the window. Don't open the door and try to pet him. Right? Because you think, oh, everything's good. And it's like the tongue, man. You think, oh, man, it's okay. It's friendly. But, man, don't let that tongue out. It's wild. He looks tame. But, man, it's like a snake, man. The minute he, it's got venom in, those, in that tongue. Can I preach this morning? It can assassinate somebody's character. So write this down. Number three, my tongue displays who I am. My tongue reveals my character. You can, you can say all kinds of stuff, and you can pretend to be this, but your tongue's going to tell me exactly who you are. And it says, verse number nine here, it says, your tongue, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with the same tongue we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. From the same mouth comes praise and cursing. He says, my brothers, this should not be so. 
So how is it, he's saying, that we can come to church and we can sing, I praise you again and again. With all of my heart, sing hallelujah. Here you are. And then the moment you get in the parking lot, you're cursing people. Your wife, your friends. And... Now, I'm not talking about just profanity. I'm just, you're putting down people. You're tearing them down. You're gossiping about them. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the church down the street. I'm just... <laughs> but but isn't, isn't it amazing how with this same tongue, we can praise God and we can worship and yet the moment we go out in the parking lot, we could be saying something differently. It's amazing. He said, this can't be. There's no way. How could we be praising God one moment and cursing the next? How could we be saying this about the church and saying how great church it is and then go outside and begin to gossip about the church? How could we be telling our kids one thing and then we go out and begin to uh, say things that are cursing our kids and putting them down? How could it come out of the same breath? How could it come out of the same mouth? He said, this shouldn't be. This shouldn't be. In fact, he even begins to talk about, uh, verse 11 and 12 says, he says, consider the source. Can both fresh water and salt water come from the same spring? Are you salt water or are you fresh water? Which one are you? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grape vine bear figs? Neither can salt, a salt spring, produce fresh water. So the point that he's making here is what is the likelihood, basically, of an apple tree producing cherries? None, am I right? The problem is what comes out of the mouth is what's in your heart. It reveals your character. What's inside will come out. Your mouth will eventually betray you. And it'll tell us exactly what's inside of you. Have you ever heard this excuse where people say, man, you know, they say something, go, I don't know what, what possessed me. I don't know how I, I don't even know how I said that. Oh, I know how you said that. <laughs> Who are you kidding? That's in your heart. I know how you were able to verbalize that. Oh, I don't even know how I said it. Man, I didn't mean to say that. Man, I'm totally caught off guard. Man, wow, I don't even know what's going on. It's all inside of you, baby. That's what's inside. Right? There was a the guy that came to his pastor and said, Pastor, this morning, I just want to lay my tongue on the altar. And the pastor said, Friend, I don't think there's enough room in it for fit. <laughs> Wow. Matthew 12, 34. I don't even know why I picked that joke, but it's good. Ma Matthew 12, 34. For out, of, for out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. So the mouth speaks what your heart is full of. What are you full of today? Because your mouth will eventually speak that out. It will reveal your character. So let me just say this. Your problem is not your tongue. Your problem is what's in your heart. And what's in the heart will eventually come out of your mouth. And I read this. I'm going I'm to read this to you. It says, a person with a harsh tongue has an angry heart. A person with a negative tongue has a fearful heart. A person with an overreactive tongue has an unsettled heart. A person with a boasting tongue has an insecure heart. A person with a filthy tongue has an impure heart. A person who's critical all the time has a bitter heart. On the other hand, a person who's always encouraging has a graceful heart. A person who speaks gently has a loving heart. And a person who speaks truthfully has an honest heart. What kind of heart do you have? So again, we got to talk about the heart. So how do we get, or how do we change our words? How do we speak life and not death? How do we begin to put a guard over our tongue? And again, I believe it's getting a new heart. It's the heart problem. Ezekiel 18, 31 said, rid yourself for, of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. So how many know you can paint something on the outside? You can paint 
you can have a well of water, and just because you paint it, if that well has poison water in it, it's not going to change if you paint the outside. You got you to realize that there's poison still in the water. You got to get a new heart. You got to get a new well. And so God's saying today that our problem with our word, the problem with our tongue is the problem with our heart. It's not the circumstances that are around us. It's not the issues that are happening around us. But it's basically, again, it's a heart issue. It's what we say. And everything we say has to do with the heart. And it's amazing when it comes to the heart that God wants you to say something different, even the point of salvation. Look at what it says here in Romans chapter 10. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be forgiven or you'll be saved. For with one heart or for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is why when we have people respond to, to receive the Lord in their life, we, we lead them in a prayer where they're confessing Jesus with their mouth because it will come from their heart. And they're asking Christ to come into their life. It's coming from their heart. What's in your heart will come out of your mouth. That's why it's very, very important today. So how do we get a new heart? Number one, stop filling it with junk. Fill it with truth. How many know garbage in, garbage out? If you fill your heart and your mind with garbage, that's going to come out. What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you spending time on? What, what exactly are you feeding your mind? What exactly are you watching? All of that begins to fill your heart and it will come out of your mouth. James 1.26 says, if anyone among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue but, de- he, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is what? Useless. You have to bridle that tongue, and the only way is you got to feed that heart something different. You got to begin to feed on something good. Can you say amen? So let me, let, me, let, me, let me just break it down. I have a few minutes. Num- uh, the way you get, you get a new heart, and number two, is you need to ask God to help you. How many of we need God's help? Amen. We can't clean up our act. We need the power and the presence of God. How many can say amen? amen. And so Psalms 141, verse 3 says, Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. Uh, another version says, God, put a muzzle on my mouth. Guard my lips. In other words, Lord, I don't want to say things that are critical. I don't want to say things that are judgmental. I don't want to say things off of the cuff. Uh, I don't want to say things that I'm going to regret. Uh, but God, help me to put a muzzle on my mouth uh, and help me, Lord, to speak words that are life and not death. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, let me just tell you this. Proof that you have the Spirit of God is not that you speak in an unknown tongue, but that you know how to control the tongue that you have. A lot of us, oh, yeah, man, you know, who cares if you speak in tongue, but you curse in English? Am I right? Watch your words. Be careful what you say. Can I, can I just say it this way? Think before you speak. How many of us have said things without thinking? You just said something, the first thing that came to you. There's a guy that said this. He goes, I offered a pregnant lady my seat, saying something like, here, you can have this seat. I know what, uh, I know what it's like. My wife is pregnant too. Turned out she wasn't pregnant. Also turns out it wasn't a lady. Boy, that's, that's really making a bad. You really, made, you really weren't thinking there. True story. I read it. Anyway, so I'm going, man, that's, that's a pretty bad mistake. <laughs> and I've done it before. I've done it. I go, oh, my congratulations. I'm not pre- Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> now, now I don't make any assumptions. 
They could be nine months pregnant. I'm still not saying anything. I don't know. I got I to gotta get it confirmed. She's looking bigger, but I'm not sure. Got to check with my wife. Honey, is she pregnant? Because I don't want to stick my foot in my mouth. I've done it. Yeah, I think it, I've done it three different times. I finally learned my message. Do never make assumptions. True. Here's the James chapter 1, verse 19. Why I said I, that, I don't know. I said it. James 1, 19. Maybe it'll help somebody. Everyone should be quick to listen, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Look at the designation here. There's an order. First, you need to listen. Second is you need to slow to speak, right? You need to be very slow. And then basically then when you're slow to speak, then you become slow to become angry. Many times the reason why anger comes in is we're not thinking, we're saying stuff before we even know all the facts. We're, we're putting input before we even know anything. And this is why it's important today that we're slow to speak. Man, we need to think about what we're saying. We need to be very careful uh, that, you know, we're not saying things uh, that just off the cuff, uh, that we want to speak the words of life. We want to make sure. How do you know what that person is going through? Here, here let, me just, let me just say it this way. I didn't even think about it, but I'm going to say it now as... As, as, as I'm preaching, I asked one of the first questions I asked tonight, and I said, how many here, you, you almost didn't make it tonight? And there was about 25% of the people said, I almost didn't make it tonight. So what if you told that person something really derogatory to them, and you had no idea that they even had a hard time showing up tonight? And instead of giving them a courage, you know, where you say, oh, why are you dressed like that? And you have no idea that they had nothing to wear, but man, they just said, you know, I'm just going to go. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Can, I, can I speak the truth? Yeah. Sometimes we're making judgments about people, and you don't even know what's going on in their life. Maybe we need to think before we speak. Maybe we need to focus more on saying something good than saying something bad. And I said this before, if you got something good to say, say it. If you have something bad to say, shut up. Oh, I just made that up. I say just <laughs> be quiet. Probably, you probably shouldn't say it. But if you have something good to say, say that word. Speak that word. Say that word to that person. Tell them, man, I'm glad you're here, man. I'm glad you made it. Maybe, it may, and so what? Maybe they're, maybe, maybe they're not wearing the latest fashion. Maybe on a Wednesday night, you know, they came in a work uniform. Man, I said, man, I'm glad you made it still. You know, who knows? But I tell you what, man, when you speak words of life, it could change somebody. And I believe today we need some wisdom. Your children, your husband, your wife. And I've done it, folks. That's why I can preach what I'm preaching. I've done it. I've, I made assumptions. I spoke before I, I, I was thinking. I assumed something was going on when it wasn't. And then I made a statement based upon what I was seeing, and it was wrong. And that's why I need to think before I speak. And I want to speak life to you. I want, I want to tell you today, man, you're in the right place. I'm glad you're here. I pray tonight that we'll, 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 we'll learn tonight to say, you know what? I'm going to really be careful about what I say. Because especially when you're saved and you got Jesus in your life, the word that you speak, you speak with authority and power. Man, let's speak some life into people. Can you say amen?